have a few announcements this morning, and there will be others during our 11 o'clock service. But we want to keep the sick and shut in in our thoughts and prayers and also the bullying. And one of our Sunday school teachers lost her brother, Mrs. Lily Joyner. And uh, we certainly do want to keep her in our thoughts as well. Uh, Sister Marquetta Winslet celebrated her 88th birthday this week. So we just um, hope that she will continue to have a long life and enjoy her life. I want to remind you that our offering will be collected in the uh, ministry center, so you may leave it there. Do we have any praise reports uh, or any others that you want to mention this morning on our sick list? Yes. Okay, Mildred Sesser lost her nephew. All right, we will keep her in our prayers as well. Are there any others? Okay, we're going to close our devotional part of our Sunday school this morning with singing Victory is Mine. Sister Jones, would you lead us again? And let us stand and sing joyfully. to turn things over to our pastor, Reverend Dr. Ramin Jackson, who will conduct our Bible study. All right, certainly we, um, we greet each and every one, those that are present and also those that are uh, viewing our uh, live stream. Uh, I know this is a, um, a new norm for us, but um, we're uh, glad that we're able to gather and to be able to study uh, God's Word. And so uh, we have combined, as we've been doing, uh, the Bible study during the week and Sunday school uh, all together um, on Sunday morning, uh, and now we'll gather at 9, 9.30. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, while we're looking for our scripture for today, which is, um, uh, where are, in Judges chapter 16, and we will 
we'll start Judges 16. And we're going to start around verse uh, 21. Okay, and we're going to conclude at verse uh, 31. I'm going to read from the uh, NIV translation, and you may have King James, uh, but it's fine. Um, either one uh, is, is saying the same thing. All right, so Judges chapter 16, uh, starting at verse 21. Uh, then the Philistines uh, seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza. And binding him with bronze shackles, they set him to grinding in the prison. But the hair of, on his head began to grow, and again after it had been shaved. Verse 23, and now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Gadam, or Gadam, their God, and to celebrate, saying, Our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, Our God has delivered our enemy into our hands. The one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. And while they were in high spirits, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us. And so they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. But when they stood by, stood, when they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple, and so that I may lean against them. And now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of the Philistines were there. And on the roof were about 3,000 um, men and women watching Samson perform. And then Samson prayed to the Lord, O sovereign Lord, remember me. O God, please strengthen me just once more. And let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. And then Samson reached toward the two central pillars on which, this, on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one and the left hand on the other. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And then he pushed with his mighty, with his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. And thus he killed many more when he died than while he lived. Last verse. And then his brothers and his father's whole family went down to get him. And they brought him back and buried him between Zorah and Eshtal, in the temple of Manoha, his father, and he laid, and he had led Israel 20, uh, 20 years. Okay, here the reading of God's holy, uh, holy word. So let's do a few things. I always like to recap, um, and, and this is kind of like our first time together. But we've been in this book of Judges um, for a few weeks, um, and. Going over these last uh, several lessons that we have studied, uh, we've learned that there were uh, 15 uh, judges, uh, 13 uh, are mentioned uh, in the book um, of Judges. Uh, and so far we have studied um, how many? A little quiz. <laughs> how many have we studied so far in the book of Judges in our Sunday school lessons for the last several weeks? Anybody remember? Ehud, we had Gideon, and we had uh, Samson, which is the lesson we're studying now. Uh, 
And so what, what commonality does all three um, have as far as title? Anybody remember? They're all judges. That's number one, right? They're all judge, judges. They're military men, right? They're all they're trained uh, in some sort of um, military background. Um, and what could differ is that uh, I know Ehud was considered a prophet um, and um, there's not much mentioned about uh, Gilead, uh, 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 Gideon rather, I'm sorry, and, uh, and Samson about the, uh, their calling as far as uh, prophecy um, is considered, or prophet is considered, but they were chosen and called uh, certainly by God. All right, so we've, we've studied three, and so now we had Samson, who's again, judge, he's a military person, but Samson, uh, has a little bit what I call a lack of faith, all right? A lack of faith, um, and then he has little challenges even with, um, I would even say, uh, the disobedience piece, um, of being obedient, actually. Um, and, so, and that was probably because of his lack of faith. Um, and, 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 um, and so, one of the things I want to share with us before we dig into uh, the lesson, because we're going to talk about... Um, the lesson outline, uh, which, is, well, first of all, we want to talk about this word, uh, victory, all right? Uh, but then we, the, as far as the lesson outline, uh, we're going to deal with um, uh, looking at Samson as, as he was captured. We're going to talk about um, his defeat. And then we're going to talk about um, uh, the victory. And so we're going to talk about uh, how he was how he was captured, and then we're going to talk about Samson's defeat. Um, and uh, the our outline also says shame, but we're going to talk about the defeat. The part of being defeated is being shamed, and then uh, his supplication and uh, his victory. Uh, but we're going to compile that into the victory piece. All right, so let's talk about um, his, his, him being captured. And before we can really um, talk about the lesson, uh, which is what we just read, and we know the Philistines uh, came in contact with him, and, um, and they, uh, they, they captured him. Uh, but Samson is known to, uh, to be a man of strength, right? Uh, and so he didn't need a whole army. He didn't need, like the Philistines, thousands of men, the Israelites who had like 300 um, you know, men, but he didn't need that because him being by himself, he had enough strength, not just physical strength, but he had the Lord on his side. And so that's one of the, we, the points I wanted to make with us is that, um, and I made this point last Sunday, is that Samson wasn't concerned about who was with him. He was more concerned about the Lord being with him rather than having a whole bunch of men uh, in, his, in, in his army to defeat the Philistines. So he defeated the Philistines mainly uh, by himself with the Lord. Okay, and so I wanted to make that, uh, that notion. But he was known for his strength, and so because he was known for his strength, uh, the Philistines uh, wanted to know the secret of him uh, being so strong. You know, what, where does his strength come from? And if you think about it, when people look at us, right, uh, and, and they see the things that we go through in life, and many of us, you know, uh, you don't even know half the story we've been through because we don't show it, right? We don't, we don't really, you know, and, and uh, my, my uh, former, former pastor used to always say, um, as preachers, he's like, folks, I want you to stand before them and, and, and you all broke down and every Sunday you're talking about your woes, you right? Folk, <laughs> folk want to see um, some hope. They want to see strength. They want to see uh, perseverance, right? Um, and so, um, and so here we here we have Samson showing that, being that, right, having that so sense of strength, and everyone knowing um, his strength. Uh, and so, in order to get him, in order to capture him, and uh, one has to find out what is his weakness, right? Uh, and so, if you looked or read, uh, and my professor, uh, teaching, uh, pr uh, preaching professor, would always say. When you read a certain text, read before and read after, so you can kind of get an understanding of what's going on in the text. And so uh, if we look at 
the beginning of chapter 16, uh, beginning of chapter 16, the verses 1 through, uh, through verse 20, uh, there's this whole story about uh, Samson and Delilah. All right. Now, what do we know about Delilah? Yes. Yeah, so she was the mistress of uh, Samson, um, and more, more, more so, she was a Philistine. She was a Philistine woman, so she was, she was, she was on the side of the enemy. Uh, and so her task was to look beautiful. Her task was to, um, uh, to yeah, to seduce him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in order for the Philistines to learn what the secret is of his strength, all right? And so her relationship with Samson was, uh, she had a motive, you know, her motive was to get to the secret or know the secret of his strength. So if we look at, um, we can look, first of all, let's look at verse four because in order for that to happen, he had to surrender to her, right? He had to have some kind of affection towards her. And so if you look at uh, uh, chapter 16, verse 4 uh, of, of Judges, it says, sometime later he, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, uh, whose name was Delilah. All right, so um, he fell in love with her. Now, when you fall in love with somebody, you pretty much would do almost anything, right? And so he... Um, and because he fell in love with her, then she took advantage of that, right? Um, and part of her taking advantage of that was trying to get to that secret of what is his, what is a secret of his strength, right? And that's why we got to be careful um, who, who we love and who loves us, you know, because some folk got different motives in trying to get to us um, and um, to discover what it is that's keeping us, discover what it is that's keeping us strong, right? And so here it is, Samson, she, she asks him the question, and, says, and Samson gives her an answer. So if we look at uh, verses, um, verse 8, and then the rulers of uh, the Philistines brought uh, seven fresh thongs that, um, that had not been dried, and she, and she tied them, uh, tied him with them. And so he pretty much told her that if you, um, the secret of my strength is if you tie me up in verse number six, and uh, it uh, says, and so Delilah said to Samson, tell me the secret of your, your great strength, and how can I tie, be tied up and subdued? And Samson answered her, if anyone ties me with seven fresh uh, thongs that, um, that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. All right, so that was the first. So they tried that, and when that happened, then all of a sudden, um, uh, he never lost his strength. He still had his strength, right? Then she tried it a second time. You look at verse uh, number 12, and so Delilah took new ropes and tied them with them. Um, and so he pretty much told her that if you get new ropes and tie it around me, you know, that, 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 that would weaken me. But that didn't work, right? So after... Uh, trying all these things, then in verse 15, she says, uh, she says to him, how can you say uh, I, I love you when you won't confide in me? And this is the third time you have made a fool out of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. All right. And so after she puts that love thing out there again, and you say you love me, but yet you're not being honest with me, right? You're not being um, uh, true to me. And so uh, then, you know, I guess that gets to Samson's heart. Um, and Samson's like, okay, all right, okay, let me, i tell you the secret of my, of my strength. Um, and so he talks about the shaving of his hair, the cutting of his hair. Um, and, um, and so he goes to sleep and then 
course, the, his head is shaved, and uh, then the Philistines come and to attack, and, um, and he is weakened because his hair was shaved and cut off. That was, that, that was, the, that was, the, that was the, the secret of, um, of his strength. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this, and we'll talk a bit about it in a second. Uh, even though that was the secret of his strength, but that really wasn't the weakness uh, of, of his strength, was his hair. So, um, Samson being a, uh, a Nazarite, uh, and a Nazarite uh, was known to, to grow the hair. You know, they, they could not, that was their vow to the Lord, uh, was to keep uh, not from shaving the corners of their hair. And when they did that, they, they, they broke covenant uh, with the Lord. Um, and uh, they broke their vow with the Lord. And so then the Lord would separate himself from, um, from his people. Um, and so it was more of a symbol uh, to show, a symbol of strength. Uh, but that wasn't the source of his strength. And the source of his strength, it was the Lord. Okay, and that's what, all that is the, is the piece of that. So even though, which, which is his other uh, point of this, I'm getting excited. Because uh, the Bible is going to tell us, as we've read our lesson, he grows his hair back. But as he grows his hair back, he doesn't, he doesn't it has, it's not that he grows his strength back because he grows his hair back, but he gets his strength because the connection he has with God. That God was always on his side. And that's the point that I uh, want to make, is that uh, as long as God is with us, um, that uh, the things that we hold to or we grab a hold to um, uh, as a source of strength, right? Um, for example, uh, if you're like me, this morning I got up and I made sure I took my vitamins for some energy, right? For some strength. <laughs> but really the strength ain't in the vitamins, right? I, I really know the strength is because God is within me, right? Uh, but I hear my grandma say in, in, in my head, I hear her voice saying, did you take your vitamins this morning? Did you take your vitamins this morning? You need your vitamins, right? Uh, and so, uh, even though on this earthly realm we pull on things for strength, but that's not necessarily our strength. Right? And so the strength that we that we um, uh, that we have comes from within, which comes from uh, come from God. And so that's what uh, Samson had uh, experienced. So when we talk about now the capture, and so. Uh, and I went through all that because we have to understand that piece to understand really how he, why he was captured, right? Why the Philistines was able to uh, enslave him and imprison him um, and how he lost his strength. And it started, and I got a couple of men in here, but it started with a woman. <laughs> Delilah, right? Uh, and so they used her. But here's the other piece. How she allowed herself to be used, right, um, uh, negatively uh, in order to bring down uh, a manservant, one that God has chosen to uh, be, the lead, be a leader for the children of, of Israel. And so here's the other side point to that. We have to be careful who we allow to use us, right? And, and that's the other piece when we talk about um, Delilah. All right, so Samson, uh, he's, he's now captured. Uh, and if we look at verses 20 and 21, um, look how he's captured. So it says the Philistines seized him and they uh, gouged or, or they poked uh, out his eyes, you know. And, and, um, and, and in those days, that, that was a way of weakening um, a, uh, a warrior or one that was. Um, a military person in battle. Um, so if you can weaken their, one of their senses, uh, then you, um, you pretty much you know, have them under your control. Uh, and so not only was his strength gone, but then he couldn't see his enemy. Right? And so there's a physical sight that's missing uh, from Samson. Uh, but I would submit to us, uh, he wasn't seen for quite some time because when he fell in love with Delilah, he, he, he lost a sense of his spiritual sight, right? So the spiritual sight went first before the physical sight was gone. Um, 
which is interesting because um, I, I would wonder if his spiritual sight was more intact, if he would still be able to have strength and survive without having his eyesight, the physical sight. Right? Uh, what's that scripture that says we walk by faith and not by what? By sight, right? Uh, and so even when we can't see physically, uh, there is this this grabbing a hold of one's faith to say, if I can't see the thing, then I at least believe in it, right? Uh, or believe I can overcome it. You know? and that's why I really, um, I really um, think very highly of those, those that you may see that don't have their sight. You know, have you ever saw someone like blind and trying to get around and do for themselves? Uh, I, I'm reminded of, um, in, in Virginia, I was driving um, off of um, um, Bramilton, um, it's, a, it's a, like one of the main highways uh, in, in Norfolk, Virginia, and it was this man that was, uh, he was blind, and it was very obvious he was blind because he had that the stick, and he was walking across traffic, and I, you know, my first thing was like, oh, look, no way in the world, if I didn't have my sight, you would not see me outside walking, particularly by myself. But he was literally just walking, and he was tapping, and, and you could tell he was looking and hearing. Well, he was hearing, and he was literally hearing what was around him and, and tapping what was in front of him. So even though he couldn't see it, he was feeling it and hearing it. And they say when, when you lose one sense, the other senses kind of kick in stronger. Uh, but the point I'm making is, it, it was, to me it was dangerous, but for him, that was his norm. Right? That was what he was familiar with. Um, and maybe he, he was used to walking that same route. Right? Um, and so the point I'm making is that he believed in himself that he can do it by himself. You know? um, and he was able to get out and, and, move, and move about. So here it is, Samson is, um, uh, he's seized by the Philistines and they, uh, they, they poke out his eyes uh, or push them in, if you will, um, and now he's not able to, he's able to see, so he's weakened even more. No strength, no sight, right? Uh, then they put him into this prison, uh, and they uh, cause him to uh, work for them. So he, he, he worked, you know, for the Philistines. Um, and not only did he work for the Philistines, but then uh, they used him, you know, to perform. Now, there's some, I think the commentary may have talked a little bit about uh, this piece, um, and one may think that performance could have been more of a, um, um, more of a, uh, how should I put it, like a wrestling kind of thing, um, more of a, um, because he is strong, has strength, that he can get in front of them and, and push and, and knock things down, destroy things as far as um, the pillars and, and so forth. So they wanted him to get in front of them to perform some kind of act um, before them. Um, while they were getting drunk and getting happy and getting married, the Bible says, and uh, they, were, they were using it as, him as for entertainment. Right? Um, uh, so he's captured. Um, and then he feels this whole defeat piece, right, in verse 23 and uh, through 27. And so now they have, they have captured him, um, and it says, when the people saw him, they, uh, they praised their God, verse 24. And so they got excited that he was captured, right? And they uh, celebrated, and, uh, and part of the celebration was because Samson, remember, he defeated them a couple of times before this, right? Uh, and so uh, they, they, have, they have lost their, their crops, they have lost their livestock, they have lost their resources um, because, because of, um, of Samson. And so they were really itching to get him. They were really itching to get back and get revenge and to, um, and to, uh, to really um, capture him uh, and make him become uh, a part of them and work for them and, and, and be enslaved. And so they, they praised their God. Now, uh, who was the God that they praised? See, if you, Dagon, yeah, Dagon was the, was the God. Um, 
And so, and what do we know about uh, Dagon, their, their, their god? I think it was in the reading. He was, yeah, so he was the god of, um, of, of, of the sea, the fish, you know, so he was betrayed. The image was of, of a fish, yeah. Uh, what else did we, we learn about him? Yeah, yeah, sacrifices. So they offered, so the Philistines worshipped this idol god um, that was an image of a fish, and, um, and so they, they brought this image before them, and they began to celebrate and drink and be merry and, and, and the whole nine. Uh, and then they called for uh, Samson to come, and, uh, and there was a servant boy that... Um, uh, a servant that, that, that brought him, um, Samson, out of the prison and before, before them. But what did Samson say uh, to the servant boy? Position. Yeah, position. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm going to perform, right? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give them what they're asking for. They want a performance. Um, he said, but, but I need you to put me between uh, the pillars, and not just any pillars. So the temple of Dagon, because they're now they're in the temple of, of their idol god, uh, and how the temple was um, uh, constructed, it had many pillars that held up the, um, from the foundation to uh, the roof. And many of them, the Bible tells you that they were on the roof, so they were on the rooftop. Now, the roof wasn't like our roofs that we have today where, you know, they have the, um, what do you call them, the shackles? Wait, uh, shingles, they have this. The shingles that are on the roof. You know, I don't do any roofing, right? Um, and so it wasn't designed that way, but it was designed as a place where, almost like a flat roof kind of thing, where you can go up on the top and you can just stand um, or you can sit, right, on the top. So they were on this rooftop and, uh, and, and it declares that there were thousands of them um, a thousand of them, men and women, right? And normally sometimes when the Bible talks about, um, uh, uh, when it talks about like a thousand um, uh, people, usually refers to, a th refers to the men, a thousand men. It doesn't include the women and children and that kind of thing. But in this text, it says a thousand men and women, all right? So the women are included in the count, all right? So I want to make that quick distinction. Um, and so while they're up there, he tells them, put me uh, at the pillars that support the foundation, support the, where, the, where the roof is, right? Because when he, when he knocks those pillars down, it's going to, the roof is going to crumble. And when it comes down, who's on the roof? Thousands of people, yeah. The thousand men and women of the Philistines, right? The, the enemy. And so he, he destroyed. But here was, this is what he does. He, and some may put this, uh, some may make reference to this as um, suicide, right? They, they would say like, well, he, he committed suicide because he killed himself while killing the enemy, right? Um, and then I, I've heard some conversation regarding this text in, in my years of, of reading this in, in Sunday school. Well, why couldn't God have saved him, you know, in the midst of that and still allowed him to kill the Philistines, right? Um, and so, you know, I, I will put a, a, a note to this, is that, uh, and I'm going to talk about this in, in my sermon this morning, but, um, but Samson didn't commit suicide, but rather uh, he was one that, um, that um, sacrificed his life for the good of humanity. And, and part of that is, where, where do I see that, is that um, if he did not kill and destroy the Philistines, and I'm getting to the victory part, if he did not kill and destroy the Philistines, the Philistines will still be able to um, enslave and empower or have power over the Israelites. Okay? And so that's why prior to this, he has been killing off the Philistines, because the Philistines have been capturing and holding captive the children of Israel. And so the Bible says, if we look at that last, um, almost to the last verse, 
It says in Sam, well, verse 28, And Samson prayed to the Lord, O sovereign Lord, remember me. O God, please strengthen me just once more. All right? So that's an indication that he knows that God has been strengthening him each and every time he came in contact with uh, the Philistines. Uh, it wasn't his strength alone, but it was God that was with him. He said, strengthen me one more time and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. And then he says, verse 29, then Samson reached toward the two uh, center pillars uh, of which the temple stood, bracing himself against it. And then his right hand on one left him the other, and, they, and it comes down. But here's a piece I wanted to focus in on, verse 30. And he says, let me die with the Philistines. He says, then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. And thus he killed many more, here it is, it's the victory, many more when he died than while he lived. And that's why the title of our lesson is The Final Victory, right? Because he was able to kill more Philistines uh, at that time because they all were gathered together to celebrate the fact that they captured him. But really, the victory was turned around, right? So the enemy thought they, they had the victory because they had him. But then Samson turned that thing around and prayed to God, and now the victory was now given to Samson. And so he died victoriously, right? Uh, but, vic but, the, but the victory didn't die with him. Oh, that's a shouting point. I felt it in my toes. Which means that victory can now be carried on to the next generation, all right? Um, and so he, um, he dies, but he doesn't die of failure. He dies, but he dies uh, with victory. And so how does that relate, you know, even uh, to us today when we think about uh, the many persons that have um, sacrificed their life, right, for the good of humanity, right? We can go, there's a whole lot of names that we can mention, right, of, of people, persons that... Um, that have seen um, opposition, have seen oppression, uh, that has grabbed a hold of um, us as a people. And over years, over the years, uh, the folks have stood up like Samson and have defended their people, right? And so just for a few moments, just for a second, we're going about to close in a second, but think about someone. So who, who, are, who are some people who have, who have, um, sacrifice their life um, for the good of, of our people or for even humanity. Dr. King, that, that, that just comes natural to us, right? Uh, one who fight, fought for civil rights um, and uh, involved the, the, um, um, uh, the, the use of the church and, and the believers uh, to fight for uh, the liberation of all uh, not just black folks, but all people, really, right? Um, and so, and then him being assassin um, just before um, getting ready to do another uh, protest and, um, uh, and, and, and another fight for um, the rights of, of, of many. Uh, and so there are those like, him, like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and others that have sacrificed their life uh, for the good of, uh, of humanity, all right? And so that's what he became victorious. Now, one would say, well, he died. But yeah, he died. But out of his death, something positive came into effect, right? Um, and so it raised up more leaders. It raised up more awareness um, of, of the treatment of African Americans uh, in that time. The legislation was, was then uh, started to change, and policies began to change. And um, yeah, so all that was. Um, was good. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X, absolutely. Um, Malcolm X. Um, uh, you got the Rosa Parks, you know, um, as well. Mm -hmm. What was that? Yes, Mega Evers. Yep, yep. He's one I'm going to talk about today in my sermon. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's close with this. I like to give some kind of assignment during the week so folks can, um, um, can
and do some kind of a study. Uh, so there are three reference scriptures, and, and you have them if you have your Sunday school book, but those that are, uh, that are online uh, that, are, that are viewing. So Samuel uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Uh, we got Psalms 74, 18 to 23. And then there's Daniel. Chapter 5, 1 through 4, and 23 through 30. All right. Um, let's see. So what I want us to do, uh, as far as study, is to look at these three scriptures, Samuel chapter 5, ver uh, verses 1 through 5, 1 Samuel, and then there's uh, Psalm, again, 74, verses 18 to 23, and then there's Daniel uh, chapter 5, 1 through 4, and then 23 to 30. When you read these scriptures, these texts, I want you to look at um, where do you see victory? Okay, that's the assignment. So when we look at these three texts, these reference scriptures, I want you to write down um, where do you see victory uh, in the text? Um, and then uh, next time we come, before we, uh, we go into the, the next lesson, uh, we will talk about where we see victory uh, in those, uh, those passages of scripture that I uh, just gave you. Uh, the next lesson for next week, for those that are viewing, again, that doesn't ha don't have the Sunday School book, uh, it is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 7. So we're moving from Judges to Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 7, uh, verses 1 through 12. Again, it's 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 12. Okay. Yes. Say one more time. Oh, those belong to you. Yep. Oh, yes. Yes. Please do. Yep. All right. Okay. You want me to close with prayer, or are you gonna? Okay. All right. Let us um, let us bow in prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for this time that we've shared uh, together in your Word. We thank you for the example, of the biblical example you have given unto us of Samson. We thank you for us learning and knowing that you are our source of strength and God whatever that we are our realities in which we live in God we know that we need your strength um, to fight any of the Philistines in our lives and God we ask that you would just continue to bless us and keep us in the hollow of your hand in Jesus mighty name we pray amen all right